This place is a bit sick. Oh, good. Can you choose a coffee? I'll choose a coffee. Yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah. Let's cheers um, Buddha being the only non black belt in the room. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But also the only one that's won a yeah. chef and chef. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. that is black cheap. Belt. That's huge news. Yeah, it's sick, eh? Better ordered it to me this morning. Fuck, Fuck. it. Fuck yeah. I thought he still can't get me, but if he can get you. <laughs> wow, that's a leap. Is this on? That's on. That's breaking news. We can talk about it. That is amazing. Welcome. Um, not a first. <laughs> it is Cheers, with great pleasure. We have Jack Della and Ben Vickers back on the pod. The boys. Yeah, it's good to be back in the Fuck studio. Yeah. You man spreading the hell out of Benny there, eh? <laughs> He's out for him. Yeah. I'm used to it. Yeah. It's been over a decade of me yeah, getting dominated. The phone splits the... He's, in, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He's in his corner in the cage and on the couch, yeah. <laughs> tucked away. Big congrats we hear. Aside from the huge win, uh, yep. you just got the black belt. Yeah, Benny awarded me my black belt this, the, this morning. Fuck yeah. I'm stoked. There's a lot of black belts out there in Perth that are grateful now that Jack's got his <laughs> black belt too. Yeah. Um, I planned on doing it before we left. It was going to be sort of the last thing I did at the gym before we went to Miami, but Jack, I, think, I think it worked out. No, yeah, it worked out well the way it's worked out. And obviously things happened. We didn't do the training session that we were going to do before we left, which I had it all planned for. So yep. uh, best laid plans and all that. But um, yeah, I thought given the performance, you know, uh, Jiu-Jitsu is Gilbert's thing and Gilbert is a four-time world champion yeah you know, adcc medalist i believe so um jack's performance in that fight definitely says to me that he is at the level of a black belt in jiu-jitsu so this oh, morning he was awarded it, it yeah. alongside yeah, his brother so. who was awarded his josh Della got his brown belt this morning too so um and uh, congratulations to the becker who got it and marco who got their black belts on sunday i believe from rod costa so, yeah um this the scrappy team just leveled up considerably <laughs> yeah. that's um uh, as already was a a vicious mat, uh, but now visually that many black belts. So not that you just try and gain much, but <laughs> yeah. I think we might. Yeah. All, next time we're all in, we'll put the gear on. Yeah, yeah. Just get the belts on. That's incredible. How does it feel, Jack? You look like you've got a big smile. On your yeah, face. I'm still. Yeah, it's pretty surprising, you know, <laughs> just because we don't uh, train the gear, but it's just a uh, cool thing that Ben, yeah, gave me my brown belt. I can remember getting my brown belt, and then obviously he's given me all my belts, but it's just that. Uh, yeah, it's cool. I feel like I can hang with black belts. I'm glad to be a black man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We well, definitely can. You show that. Yeah. yeah. Man, and let's talk about that arm. So you've just had surgery? Yeah, I had surgery on Tuesday. How did it go? Was yeah, it, I think all good. You were knocked like, out? Yeah, and then... <laughs> went out, put a plate in. They did some tendon reattachment in my thumb. What's all the red shit on your fingernails? It's just because it's the uh, stuff they like, paint, you know, like paint your hand in the like, anti- uh, and what is it yeah. antiseptic or like something oh. so it doesn't get uh and then because you can't really can't wash it shower, so <laughs> yeah. just, have you got a um oh it's all the way up your arm mate. It's it's everywhere. yeah i think they literally paint your arm in a day yeah so how long's that yeah. cast on for do you know to tomorrow i get it oh. off and then they put on like a plastic spoon thing which you can then take off oh in the shower and in everything the shower, yeah so <laughs> i think when that when it get i can just like sweat a bit i'll be a bit, it'll be good <laughs> <laughs> so are you nice. doing like zero yeah, other work now? Yeah, nothing really. Just sort of nothing. It's still a bit sore. Still, today sort of the day it's probably felt the best. Yep. Been, what is it, Friday? What, oh, sorry, Monday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah it's almost, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> almost uh, a week since surgery. So yeah, I think after a week, I'll slowly just get back into it. And what do they reckon, like 12 weeks? is? The I think 12 general? weeks is like their full contact sort of area yeah and i feel like i can be fit in 12 weeks as well and then probably just need a few weeks after it to get fired yeah so i reckon yeah august probably the is perth, so is the perth for. card confirmed or it's just talks or i'm pretty sure it's confirmed i think there'll be an announcement this week yeah is um, it definitely perth or are they is it strike because i was hearing perth. like Sydney. definitely perth. yeah cool that's exciting yeah, yeah. Yeah. there's only one man who can be the main yeah. for that, sure. <laughs> we say even Ursi, I reckon Ursi will obviously. If he's the world champ. He'll be world champ, I reckon. And then probably turn around nicely Were you for him. like stoked when you woke up yeah. to that news with him? Pretty, yeah. It was such a shock, eh? But it's like. At the same every, time. I feel like everyone's like, oh, yeah, why? Does he deserve to be there? But everyone also thinks, oh, he's probably going to win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. I think I said it on this podcast like uh, a couple of years ago that Ursig had what it takes to be the world champ. I remember when Jack and I went for contender series and we were training in the cage and Moreno was finishing his camp in, 
in, and he was the champ at the time in the cage next door. And I just looked at Jack afterwards. I went, Ursa could dust that guy. He's not, he's not that good. <laughs> yeah. I I remember saying it. Yeah. And when, when you see him face to face and, and obviously having been in the gym with Steve and, and seeing Steve fight, I think, um, and I that's Steve, two years ago, Ursek. He, he's improving every yeah, fight like Jack is as well, sure. hey? Mm. So These like, boys are still young, yeah. Still yeah. Young. <laughs> Pretty awesome for him. I was trying to think, was, is that is his rise one of the quickest ascensions to the belt? Like outside of like Pereira probably was pretty quick once he got in. But Ursek's so, like taken, sure, yeah. he's done the right way. Like he took short notice fights and yep. made the most of them. And now yeah. he's he's at where he's at. Like, he's right there, yeah. It's fucking amazing. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's great. And I, I think he's a, he's a live underdog, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. He can win this fight. Like, there's no doubt about that. He has the power to knock any flyweight out. So good. And he's has, so good. And yeah, you know, he can knock anyone out. He's got the jiu jitsu ability to to give everyone problems on the ground, too. Yeah. So, and he can wrestle. And he's a motherfucker. Like, don't, don't, <laughs> don't, be, don't be confused by his like um, librarian, accountant esque face. You know, Steve it, Crowell. <laughs> he can, uh, yeah, yeah, Steve, Steve Ersig is, is uh, very, I, I mean, I, I, I think he'll win. Yeah. Yeah. I love the props he gave you, Jack. On I listened to him on Luke Thomas interview, and like it was a really good interview. You yeah. know, like sort of Luke's such a um, noughts and crosses kind of guy. Eh? Like he's very much about the X and O's, and he's a big fan of him. And then he's obviously a massive fan of you, Luke. He speaks about you often. Yeah, right. But how Ersik was saying how he reckons you're one of the best boxers, oh, and he hit differently. And I think Luke was thrown out that you guys actually would spar. <laughs> <He's> like <laughs> yeah. what, the body difference. Yeah, <laughs> but you just got the. It's just. Uh, from an Australian point of view, it's when we spoke about it before on this potty with you guys, but it's just so exciting seeing you guys pave the way, doing what you're doing. Like, and next gen, it's fucking, there's just going to be killers coming from Australia for yeah. all the work you guys are doing and the other guys in New Zealand. It's exciting for the sport in down under. You could narrow yeah. it down though and, and talk about WA. Yeah. I yeah. mean, yeah. Steve yeah. And, and Jack, obviously, both from WA and then. We've got Rod as the bantamweight champion and um, Anthony Drillich as the flyweight champion <laughs> in Australia. It's absolutely like, ridiculous. Perth is punching yeah. always. Like Big Perth. thanks to you too, Benny, for that. What's <laughs> that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is though. That you've um, like created this environment and you, you're obviously doing something really But wrong. all like Quillen, <laughs> you got Quillen Sal killed, you yeah. know, all, all these guys, like the Perth scene is hot. Like yeah, Abdallah doing doing good things. Like um, he he obviously just had a miss in his recent like step up in weight class to challenge. But double champs hard to get, right? We've seen yeah. that with Costa, and there is definitely and Volk, and you know it's hard to get two belts. It's not it's no mean feat. So yeah, um, yeah, there's a lot of Perth dudes out there at the top end of the sport, like giving people problems. You know? <laughs> and Drillich, like I was saying with Jack and Steve, they haven't put a foot wrong. Like you couldn't have a more impressive start to his career. Drillich is the same. Like every fight he's getting brutal knockouts mm. yeah for a flyweight too yeah is he a contender like is he starting to get discussed around potentially being With, a UFC it, prospect yeah. or where does he sit he is he yep. is 100 percent. like he if you watch him fight now it's not just he can knock people out like again he's another highly skilled guy like he's patient he he waits he watches he you know he doesn't take his eye off the ball he's always um laser focused he takes his time um but he finds the shot and and he's not afraid to risk it for the biscuit. And and then you look at his ground game. He's a high level black belt under Marcus McKeeva, who is one of the best like styles of grappling for MMA. Uh, good leg lock game, um, great wrestler. Yeah, you know, he's got every, skills everywhere he needs to be. And he has the the bomb. Yeah, you know, so um, not and a lot of flyways. Super yeah. aggressive. Yeah, dude. <laughs> he's an angry dude. He wants to hurt you, and I think all he's good, so nice. Yeah, all good fighters That's like Della. <laughs> yeah, that is. That's it. That that white line fever. This is the sport where you need it. Yeah. When the cage door closes, you need to be an asshole, and you need to want to remove people from their consciousness. Like yeah. that has to be forefront of your mind. But yeah. there's a control to it. Beautiful violence, we call it. Yeah. Does it allow you, does it allow you to stay stay in the moment? Doesn't it? That calmness under pressure. Yeah. You watch your walk out. In Florida, in Miami, and you just look. What's well, it's everyone? You're kind of known for it, right? You just look like you're so. You've got such a good temperament, but you know when the cage closes, you've got yeah violence in your mind. Yeah, there's something scary it. about that. Rather than a guy jumping around, fucking going crazy, it's like this yeah, I mean, calm, everyone's cool. different, right? Some people need to just like egg themselves up, but I prefer to sort of uh, yeah, just try and like just trust the reactions and just try and stay super calm. What music is listening to in the locker room? We, well, we had a playlist from, we had, we that we made on the trip this time that we put on. Normally, we put this um, 
It was a bit different to normal, wasn't it, this trip? Yeah. We didn't do like a lot of the things we routinely do this time around. We did all the like the key things that we normally do. But yeah, we didn't bring an MP3 player so or a pump for the ball. So the yeah. two things that are sort of like the music and the ball that we're sort of synonymous for, we kind of struggled with because we didn't have anything to play the music on and, and the ball we didn't get pumped yeah. up till right before the end of the the trip. So it was it was a weird one. But we did <laughs> yeah, have a, um, yeah. a playlist we made. So we kind of had that. But then MVP put his music on. He had some, like, reggae, he had some reggae stuff, which man, right. which was cool. Well, I think we prefer something more subdued rather than one time we were in the back and there was um, someone was listening to Goggins on repeat. <laughs> 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 what do you mean? His voice. Well, remember that? Tony Ferguson, surely. <laughs> It was just, no, yeah. just like mantras and okay. positive just, affirmations yeah. and yeah, shit and like him shouting. Wait till Cam hears about this. <laughs> oh, oh, Cam would have flipped the room. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm not, the, I'm not into that kind of stuff. So it was until that guy went out of the room, it was kind of horrible. Like just standing there listening to someone shout yeah. positive affirmations at this dude. But, that was weird. But yeah. Well, a little bit of reggae. Yeah, it's just something chilled. You just want to yeah. relax. And yeah. And yeah. Um, who else were you sharing? So is it all like the, were you red corner, all the red yeah, corners? it was a pretty were... small change room, mm. smaller than usual. It was like us, MVP was in there, Jelton Jel Elmay yeah. was in there, and then he- Some other fought. dude as well, but they were just leaving. As they were just leaving, there. and then Sh O'Malley was in our corner. At yeah. the end, he came. So yeah. yeah. Does uh, MVP, because obviously same division, you just might one day cross paths. Yeah. Do you see him kind of paying a little bit extra attention to your routines no, not and really. stuff? He's or? a pretty chill dude. He yeah, was a respectful. Yeah. We just sort of stayed out of each other's way. Yeah. Hey, it was funny watching him warm up. It was pretty like yeah, it was his poor training him. partner. He's just why. Well, obviously, what you'd expect. He's just jumping around the room. Was that? I think I might have heard O'Malley oh. say that he saw someone going pretty skits on the bag. Right. He was. Oh, he, was he was on more just doing skits on his training partner, just jumping up and like doing flying knees and shit. Jumping pretty much. <laughs> I mean, as close as you could get to hitting him, and then sometimes hitting him, and then pretty wild. Yeah. And did you get to watch much of his fight? No, I honestly still haven't actually watched it. Yeah. Okay. I want to watch it though. Take him. We'll see the fight after wanna, yours. We'll yeah. 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 Should yeah. we go through the the, <laughs> the actual fight? Like The, the right. getting to the fight was funny because we left late, right? And obviously we didn't realize this, but Jack put it together afterwards. Trump was went walked out just before Jack, right? So the traffic in our truck was so bad. Like so we got, an hour, we were just yeah. in the car, like bumper to bumper. Bumper right? to bumper traffic. Because the Secret Service. And, yeah, well, oh, I guess yeah. they must have closed some roads off and made it difficult for access. We ended up getting out of the car, me, the four of us, me, Ryan, Rod, um, and Jack, in all our gear with our UFC like Cornish <laughs> and just walking through traffic <laughs> and walking to the loading bay. We were like yeah. sitting right next to the arena, like where we had to go was like right there. We just couldn't get there. Yeah, so, uh, we got Let's just get out. Because we we were kind of late as it was. We were we were cutting it to we had plenty of time, but, but to what crashing. they wanted us there for. Yeah. Um so yeah, it was a bit of like a funny one. Just we walked in, just cruised in on foot. Which is kind of cool. Yeah, so, any danger, mate? The Trump <laughs> <laughs> rock up the door. They're like tickets. Yeah, <laughs> You're like, come on. And just before, I, just before I walked out, like Trump obviously walked out. It's yeah, pretty funny. Like, we, yeah, he, he obviously came past us. He was ten meters from us. Like, like, yeah, I saw the photo of you guys in, waiting to enter, and like him and Dana walking yeah. in with yeah. all their security. Yeah. Eh? It was pretty surreal. The, did the crowd give a massive pop? It looked yeah. like it on the broadcast. Sounded like it. Eh? Well, yeah. while Jack was fighting, there was a fuck Joe Biden chant. Though. Was it <laughs> amazing? <laughs> It's yeah, surreal, man. We're so surreal, crazy. Man. What was that like? I know you're not thinking about it at the time, but when you reflect, like you literally, the president of the United States is like two yeah. rows away from you while you're just like yeah. knocking guys out. It's it's almost, it was unbelievable. Jack went <laughs> over to where he was at the end. As I well, didn't walk it? past him at the end. He was sort of in his own world. And his daughter was next to him and I was sort of trying to get her attention, she like bumped him and he was just off. Like, <laughs> so he's asleep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh no, because it went in your right hand, but he's notorious for his handshake. Oh, eh? He yeah. like pulls you in. True. Imagine he, like, you got your broken arm <laughs> and Trump like. <laughs> yeah. Trump, Trump by KO. So the arm, uh, apparently first round, and you might not have known or you kind I of don't knew. No, nah, I didn't really know at all, to be honest. So at the, like going into the third round, I just felt like I couldn't like uh, – really clench so i was thinking maybe i had broken hand yeah but it wasn't hurting i was just sort of uh it was just felt a bit weakened but i don't know it was, my, it was definitely one of the kicks like i feel like from this get-go when i went like slid back south boy he kicked straight away so i reckon that was part of his uh game plan yeah was just probably kick the body a lot yeah i think i feel like i blocked him all but like 
Yeah, <laughs> obviously one of them just cracked it. Yeah. Because you put that photo up, it kind of looks like that frame. Yeah, one, right? there's one where it looks like I, there's a photo, but yeah, couldn't pin. But it wasn't really sore, to be honest, until like right after. And how about throwing it? Do you have any recollection of throwing it? I mean, like, oh, or was it no, just too really. much adrenaline? Yeah, I guess I was just focused, too much adrenaline. And what about when you're posting up on it? Yeah, There's photos I, yeah, of I was that. posting. I wasn't ever thinking, like, don't post. Like, yeah, um, I was just sort of going with it. Didn't, I didn't think. Yeah, I was just fighting as if I was fine. <laughs> yeah. And then probably five, ten seconds after the you said stoppage, I was just like, oh, it started really hurting. And I thought, I was like, yeah, it's broken. You said it to me pretty soon after yeah. the fight. Like when the first time I spoke to you, you said, I think my arm might be broke. Yeah. That's um one thing to think about. You know, Connor he goes back and his leg bends in half and breaks like a buckled. Say – if you ever have that again and you post oh, on it, yeah. imagine like it buckled. Buckled like that. Yeah. yeah. And at least now you know like you went yeah, on with it. Yeah, who knows? It could have been if like, it buckles bro- like that, you can- broken and then buckling it just cracked it maybe. But then you could have but- still finished him anyway yeah. with your elbow. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Pick off your hand and just yeah. start hitting him yeah. with well, your arm. Let's just hope it never happens again, yeah. honestly. Yeah. But um, it's, it's cool to know that. You have the ability like to be in the moment enough to- That's what I mean. To get the job done, you know? Yeah. Like- Science, you've yeah. actually done it. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I feel like that's other sports. A lot of guys, if it's AFL, the play stops straight away. The player knows they've done something, or rugby. Yeah. like the fact that you're in a fucking fight and it was dull yeah. at that moment. It's crazy. Yeah. Your pain threshold and the adrenaline must be. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just such a short. The fight's so it's like 15 minutes of like extreme focus, and you sort of put everything else in the back of your head. So I reckon it'd just be that. Mm. I heard Cheeto say as well once in that fight with O'Malley, he his eye was hurting or something and he was a bit worried about it. And then his, his corner or his coach, he's like, fuck your eye. And then it snapped him back and he's like, oh, yeah, true. Fuck it. Like, right, and yeah. then it brought him back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is just part of the sport, I guess. I have had it with, with fighters who will say to me in between rounds, oh, this hurts. I'm like, well, what do you want to do? Do you want to stop? And they're like, no. I like, well, then you've got to work around it. You know, like you're in it. Yeah. If, if, you, if you're if you able to go out, then you need to just work around. And that's what, your job, to not, snap them back in. Yeah, exactly. Like- or it, just, if they say no, then I, my job is to pull them from the fight. Yeah. But no fight, fight is ever really going to say no. The common, the common one's the knee, right? Like you see MCLs go and they still fight. Jan, I think Jan was battling through some injuries in his yeah. fight after yeah. the fact. Like, so I guess that adrenaline can be your best friend in a way at times. Especially in a short. Like if it was long form, that would wear off after a while. But um, in, in 15 minutes. Yeah, I think uh, Dan Hooker did the exact same break as mine in the Jalen Turner fight. Yeah. It's just a and scratch. Fought, it, it, Is that uh, that one? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah my well, he got pretty so, far. Yeah, he got pretty like that was a damaging fight for Dan as well. That was a war. Yeah. Um same break. I was wondering after round one, because I was watching the fight with Mitch Johnson and Timmy and Steele at Varsity, a couple of others, and we were kind of I thought Jack took round one. And same. then um I, I thought I heard on the pod you or was that just to rev Jack up for round three? You're I like you down two. I but then I thought Jack won all three rounds against Kevin Holland. And I f- thought Jack clearly won two rounds against Basil Hafez. So I, even though what I think, I understand it's not necessarily what the judges think. Yeah. So that's why we were pushing for the yeah. finish because you're in Miami. Gilbert's had a lot of control. You know, it's not hard to think the fight's going to – it's a close yeah. fight. It's not hard to think it's going to sway to him. For me, I'd always rather go for a finish and not need one than not go for it and need one. Yeah. So It's interesting the judge that did give you that first round – um, Sal, I don't know how you say yeah. his name. I reckon Diamato. Sal Diamato just honestly flips the coin, eh? Well, he, yeah, because he I went against you so in the Basil fight, just... but then that one he had your back. Yeah. So I wonder if he was kind of, and the Kevin Holland split, he had your back too, didn't he? Oh, no, he was only on the two of them. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know that there's any rhyme or reason to it. I don't know if they Flip pay the attention. Coin. Yeah. I like that theory. Eh? I reckon yeah. that's what he does because his, <laughs> his ones are so random, eh? Yeah. But he I had can, you, he yeah. was backing you for that one. You so. can't, I don't know. I think the yeah. way me and Ben score fights is different to the way the judges do, and we get that. So I think going head- going into the third round, I was definitely thinking like the judges have definitely one judge has definitely at least given him two rounds. Yeah, yeah just from yeah. control, just because control. Yeah, because we were talking about it, like, and he did land fight. in the second round. He definitely did land a couple of like a shots, big yeah. elbow and like a yeah, like and then he finished that big. second round. With a big overhand. With a takedown. On the back. So I, I remember thinking, yeah, fair call. Even though you were yeah, piecing him up. Yeah. And I was then like, the first round I was thinking, oh, I thought I was piecing him up on the feet, but he got two, I think, maybe two takedowns. So like two bits of control. Yeah. 
Mm. It looked like you were doing more damage, but he the, in the rule sets of the sport, he was just kind yeah. of ticking, up, ticking boxes. That's what but I think. Damage the is the number one yeah. criteria. So yeah. for me, like people don't score the fights right because Jack did the most damage. Gilbert had more control, but you don't go to control unless there's no damage to score, right? Yeah. yeah. But it's so subjective judging and it depends on what the judge is looking at, if he's even paying attention, if he's listening to the noise of the crowd, like whatever. Yeah. Does he have a coin in his pocket? Yeah, <laughs> has he flipped a coin and, and yeah. is he just there? Has he decided the results of these fights before he even rocks up? And yeah. He's yeah. just collecting a paycheck. But you, you, you you're see. better off just thinking that you're losing. Yeah. Because so, that way you're not going to get yeah, the, the wrong. Yeah, I definitely got the impression and I think we all agreed I had to get the finish in the third round. And during that third round, so I remember you were doing really well at the start. Yeah. And then he gets you down. Yeah. When you're down, are you thinking, oh, fuck, I need to go here? Or I was sort of, weather that started, I thought I was putting on a pressure on him. And I thought I was like, it's, I, I reckon I could get him. I felt like he was tired. Every time I hit him on the body, I thought he was feeling it. And then he got a hold of me. Felt like he was like gripping, like he was just holding on, like he was just trying to ride out the round. So I was sort of just being patient and just like waiting. I thought if I could get it to the feet one more time, I reckon I could get some damage. Yeah. And is there also knowing it's a third round and potentially you have to win that, um, is that a different, like you're just going to like don't care about range or anything, you're just going to go for uh, it? No, that- I don't know. It was sort of. It was sort of hit and miss because I, I did – my issue probably was giving up range, trying to land too much, and he got the takedown. I mean, once you're already down and you know there's, say, two minutes left, there, is yeah. that where you're like, fuck it? Or you still no, I, was, <laughs> would have, I would have just been more, uh, yeah, trying to not get taken down in the last two minutes and just damage, but probably focus more on not getting taken down. But I did think it, as soon as I do get up, I reckon that there was like a split, like five, 10 second period in when we, as soon as we get back to my feet, that I could probably damage him. Yeah. And I was thinking he might shoot a takedown. So just try and throw something up the middle. Yeah. And just instinctively, I just like, <laughs> I don't, yeah, I just instinctively, as soon as I saw him Perfect. start to shoot, I thought just yeah. try and, and land the knee. Positionally in the octagon, were you right near Benny in your opposite. corner? Opposite. Opposite, opposite side. In Gilbert's corner. And could you good. hear that knee land pretty like on the broadcast side? I was in a <laughs> yeah, I, no, it was. Yeah, you were like, "Oh shit!" That was kind of the last I saw of the fight because then the commission got involved, and I, I ended up. I had that ongoing battle from wrapping hands to walking to the cage to the finish of the fight with the commissioner. <laughs> I didn't know about this. No, it was so crazy. Um, <laughs> so we'll get to that after. But let's <laughs> yeah. let's, let's yeah. Um, finish on on the fight. So, so the knee lands, and um, yeah, are you thinking? In your head, like this, I was thinking, yeah, from the knee landing and the way he went down, and the way that I thought, I thought he was just holding on, like he was just like right out the round. I think he realized that he was. I thought he realized he was in trouble on the feet. Eh? Yeah, but and then when he went down, I was thinking it's done. I reckon the ref could have almost stopped it at any point, but I'm sort of glad he didn't. Because you got to just. Put the stamp I don't know on it. if it had if he had stopped it early, then you get the. Uh, you get people thinking like, oh, was it too early? You're yeah, yeah, off, yeah. You're better off it going too far than too early, I think. that We we mentioned that yeah. on a different episode, but it felt like it was super necessary <laughs> yeah, to like yeah. stamp it. And, yeah. um, and he's so tough, so he was still sort of like framing in a way and had a strong sort of frame, so – yeah. Uh, yeah, he was pretty hurt though. Hey? He was hurt, yeah. Because when you're getting announced, he's still laying yeah. down. Looks like he's. There's a lot of unanswered elbows, like yeah. straight across his head. Was and the knee, sore? He's still hurt from the knee too. Forget, don't forget, he just got kneed right in the yeah. fucking chin. Yeah. Basically. Did yeah. your elbow bruise up or anything? Nah, not at all. They used to eh? yeah. good technique. <laughs> That was Good like almost hard to watch the couple of blows he was getting. Yeah. Like it was super necessary because you were just like wailing on him. And I was like, but, but the ref has to give him a chance, yeah, like you said. Yeah, so it's and, and like you said, he stamps out any. He's going to do it to you, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it's the, it was that's fun. How the knee was hurt around the world, though. Yeah. That was unbelievable. And it's almost some of them elbows, like he's knocked out, and then you give him another, and he's back awake. And yeah. Then yeah. Another, he's knocked out, and so you kind of like yeah. <laughs> a factory reset. <laughs> yeah, he's kind of like yeah. the factory resetting him. Yeah, and definitely. Yeah, and have you caught up with him since the fight at all? Nah, Any messages, just really, nothing? The only time I had uh, spoke to him was in the octagon. Yeah, you would have like, seen uh, that message he yeah, left you? Yeah, which is cool. So he's cool. A, he's a, obviously a legend, tough as, and he gave me the opportunity, you know. Yeah. Which is like the, he's the sort of guy that if when he's in the top five, he wouldn't just uh, want to fight the people in front. He gives the people behind him the chance to also take the top five position so you got to respect it yeah. everyone loves him for that yeah. reason he's yeah. so like such a g i sure. think he turned up 
the best he's looked for a while too. Like I actually didn't expect it to be that hard for Jack. Maybe that's um, silly on on my part, but yeah. like I thought, Jacks would give him too much problems on the feet for him to. But his rest, he wrestled really well. Like he had a couple yeah. of real nice details in his wrestling, yeah. committed really hard to the hips. Um, well, he's a motherfucker. He's yeah, but was Seriously. like <laughs> he knew that he couldn't stand for extended periods of time like he probably could with some of these other guys yeah. so he was very active on looking for takedowns in this fight whereas he hasn't been so active in others um yep. so you know it's nice to be what is the best version of gilbert there's been for a while yeah um, and and just prove that the grappling's there for anyone that was questioning it you know um the questions are answered yeah and yeah look bring on the next, next <laughs> the chef can't call out yeah didn't I, see that coming that's so I know, it's insane. a fight yeah it's a fight i've wanted for a while and i think he's the uh i think the way it works out now like obviously leon and Bilal would fight so then it's sort of good timing like me and him could fight and then is that obvious though is Bilal getting the shot have they mentioned i that? think uh, i don't know i think it is <laughs> Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he, he's got to get it, doesn't he? He's got to I mean, love him or hate him, he deserves it. He needs it. Like, yeah, they, and they've got unfinished business. Leon. Yeah. yeah, and is that also um, you and Leon sharing same management? Like, I know a lot of dudes from a less uh, like from a lesser position would have called out for the title shot straight away. Is there a bit oh, of respect there, know. or no, is it more really. you just want? Just I'm keen to fight. I like Shavkat stuff. I've always sort of wanted to fight Shavkat. I think he's the best and i mean it's a pretty challenging fight i remember the very first time we had you on the pod we i think i asked yeah. you who your favorite fighter was in the whole division and you said yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that was pre like contenders the contenders yeah that was maybe. like Etern yeah. as eternal yeah. champ i think yeah. yeah yeah which is cool that that could be coming to, yeah. to life maybe, yeah. and it could yeah. possibly be in perth yeah. it'd be insane <laughs> sick is there any indication if he's prepared to travel i or? think he i think he would be i think he had a they from what i heard he had, may have had an injury but he was good to go august so we're sort of in the same boat, just. And do we have any backup plans if he doesn't? I don't know. Maybe that's Timmy's job. Know. Yeah, maybe Usman. Oh, that's Possibly. a fun one. Yeah, I don't know. That'd be my. <laughs> yeah. He got thrown in the way. I don't think he. I don't know if he'll want that. Although he's not scared of anyone. But like yeah, I saw the Shavkat on it. He was doing that ESPN thing, and they mentioned, "Why don't you fight Shavkat?" And he kind of like, <laughs> <laughs> did he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think he was thinking like, "Come on, give me like someone else and all." Yeah, Colby. Yeah, uh, yeah. Colby. But um, that. When you were talking about the some of those ones on the those body rips, you could see something wash over Gilbert Hay, yeah. and then he wanted to go to the ground, didn't he? Like you could see yeah, hurting him for sure. I felt like I hit him a few times, like pretty nice shots to the body. <laughs> yeah, and it's hard if you miss it on the uh, the shots that you don't they don't see you don't see damage on the TV. So if you miss them, you don't actually know, but they're pretty damaging shots. <laughs> it was so what we were watching it. Um, at home and like man the emotion i didn't go, oh, i was down south so we raced home and had it on delayed and didn't want any spoilers so we me and alicia watched it we were getting teary when you won a eh? like alicia was jumping on the couch like, <laughs> yeah. because it was just the, the way yeah. it unfolded man yeah. you were like on the ground and you got back up and just that knee was down, perfect yeah, like yeah. but alicia was like we were proper like emotional like so pumped for you guys and yeah. then Whitey, obviously, you were live with audience around you, so I can't imagine what it was like to hear that pop. Oh, like the, the entire crowd. room was on their feet sick. So from sick. from the knee, yeah. like all the elbows. Everyone was standing the whole time because everyone was like, "It's about to finish." And then he keeps waking up, and you're like, "Is it or not?" Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a few reaction vids sent to me of different people in different <laughs> places. Like, yeah. all the places are going bananas. Yeah, it's awesome. Man. It must be nuts as well. The because uh, your rise has been pretty visible. Um, I remember I was sitting next to Mitch. I was like, "What? How many followers has Della got?" And you were on like exactly a hundred thousand. And then I think I looked the other day, and you've already gone up like sixteen thousand yeah, right. followers. Yeah. So you must be getting so much messages and DMs. And yeah, he yeah, he's <laughs> a support. It's sick. It's fucking cool. Way. Yeah, but. For a man that doesn't just, use his phone, you're not, really, yeah, not a man with the. Yeah. You're like a little bird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Nokia for a while. Too, can, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, no, I appreciate it. It's cool. Uh, have you? But found it's just a cool. At the end of the day, it was just a fun like getaway, like a cool trip. Go have a fight. Miami's pretty. A cool yeah, place, we had yeah. a sick time. Like we had our closest team around us. It was a really good, good time, trip. This man. one, it, yeah. it ran smooth, as smooth as it could have. You know, there's a few hurdles going into fight week and stuff like that um for us but can we talk about them <laughs> um i don't know it's up to jack <laughs> the, to talk the about staff them. yeah yeah i had uh sorry yeah i had staff just heading into uh just before we left let's like be two, honest you limped before. onto the plane yeah. with staff he limped onto the plane on antibiotics yeah the wednesday before fight week yeah 
We've got guys pulling out of fights two weeks out with staff. Yeah. You know, it was Jack, a staffy card, hey? The Frenchie had it too. Jack yeah. was never going to pull out. So, but unfortunately, we, we lost a week of training. Yeah. Which, you know, Jack's always ready. So that's not the end of the world. But the antibiotics is always that unknown. How's it going to affect your body and how you're going to go bounce back? Yeah. So, but the, you were good that week. Really good. Well, yeah, I was went, thinking like it would, it was like, yeah, Wednesday, the week before fight week, I was on antibiotics and it's sort of like, I think it was like really sore the weekend before and it had gone like quite a lot better. Yeah. So I was thinking the antibiotics were obviously working. Was that from over east with Craig and them? No, nah, I don't think so. I think it was quite it was quite a bit after. Yeah, okay. And just a little cut on your knee and it got in there somehow? Yeah, it was just like a little pimple on my knee. A pimple? Yeah, like a pimple oh. thing on my knee. And it just like that's what they start like. Yeah. yeah for the it just sort part. of like just my knee swelled up and it was just painful. Eh? And how did you feel on the antibiotics? Were you like, oh, this is gonna be touch and go or no, nah, not right. I just we didn't really train. We just chilled for like the first four days we were there. We just yeah. like had the antibiotics and we were just cruising. Yeah. <laughs> and then on the Sunday I stopped taking the antibiotics and then we sort of did a little workout and I felt pretty I felt fine. Eh? I was just Yeah. That's I mean, nuts. you just gotta roll with it, right? Yeah, exactly. It is, at the end of the day, it's only fifteen minutes, just get in there. Go I can do I feel like I can do fifteen minute fire on my worst day. Yeah. Whitaker you know? uh, listening to him, he got sick the day of his last fight and then <laughs> he, uh, two, he flew back home and got the sickest he's ever been. And the interview I watched, they said, oh, what would happen if you've put up fight day when you were that sick? And he said, I would have fought. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the hell? If this you've made the decision you're going to fight, I, I think the same as when you had to spend an extra week there and cut weight again. You know? yeah. If you've made the decision in your brain you want to fight, that's what you want to do because you, you don't see how hard these boys work and they only get two or three, four max opportunities yeah. a year to to exhibit that and to earn money. And yeah. So, and Jacket, you've been out for a while. Hey, there was no way yeah. you were going to pull out of this fight. No, such a big probably. fight, such a big occasion. and Yeah, but that's not everyone. That's certain types. Yeah. Because I know 100%. when I'm sick, I'm in bed. <laughs> yeah. I Jack, ain't fine, mate. Jack, Jack's in a cage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is. That was, and it was one of the, it's basically the year of the 300 everyone wanted just earlier. Yeah. Like that yeah. was the card yeah. of the year, in my opinion. Like, obviously we're a bit biased because we're invested because yep. it's you guys, but that card was sick. And they all all the fights came together. Fuck, it delivered was, as well. Man. It was like a good yeah. card. I was saying it was see, almost yeah. hard. Like Sugar put on such a clinic. It was almost hard to get up for it, in my opinion, watching because your one was so emotionally draining. And yeah. then I thought Dustin's performance Which, was yeah. amazing. Yes. Like, yeah, for the sure. way he won. I thought those two fights for me just blew the roof off the yeah. venue. And then it was almost like a come down, the main event. Yeah. Because as a result, like, but Sugar looked fucking slick. Yeah, yeah, he's great. But yeah. DDP, I, yeah, Dustin looked. That knockout was just. I didn't see yeah. it coming. Yeah, yeah, that was. So he was getting because he was getting laid on him. Yeah, that guy's a, a zombie. Fight. Yeah, yeah. how's so um, nice. Sugar and Timbo oh, um, behind the scenes? Are they pretty cool guys? They were cool. We sort of yeah, we chat. They seem cool. Tim seemed nice. Sugar was sort of obviously. He keeps zone. himself to himself. Yeah. for the most part, he hides under a hood behind his sunglasses for, for, the, yeah, for what so I saw just, of him. Yeah. Um, but yeah, everyone's nice. Like we we don't really see a lot of people because we stay well out of the way. So the we very are they nice? No, they're cunts. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> the commission. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, we try and stay out of the way and just keep ourselves to yeah. ourselves. And um we found we had a little Airbnb as usual and just this great little place. It was relaxing and, and Miami's like the Goldie, just you, you yeah. go to the beach and um it's a really great place and, and we had a tight team we didn't have a big crew we had just a little tight little team we had a good time this time around, yeah, and everything went trip. you know even though everyone wasn't smooth in the leader once we got there we hit the ground running um everyone was happy everyone was in a good mood you know the whole team it was just good yeah. it was just good vibes and just got out of there and then grabbed the cash and that <laughs> <laughs> yeah how good was that on the that was amazing man i <laughs> love the basketball footage of you because i'd seen embedded and yeah. i saw he was courtside and i just saw that your guys instagram that you're a we were like the seat. last yeah, it, was it, perfect, it had yeah. a sniper appeal yeah. to it like just <laughs> sizing him up we eh? got some other footage of that that we'll probably yeah. like i think yeah. jack's gonna start a little youtube channel Oh, yeah, sweet. I'll drop a Miami uh, YouTube video. Jack yeah. likes to control his own media. <laughs> <laughs> Who was um, filming for you behind the ben. scenes? Isn't it? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> so the camera, camera. Is a bit, the foot is it's shaky, but ben at least embedded. we at least we switched the camera on this time. We've taken the camera with us, and none of us are really that way inclined. But Jack just got it, got the camera out early, 
and we just got into it and we had a good fun doing it. Definitely yeah. do it. The Jack yeah. life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We call it uh, the embedded. Yeah. 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 embedded. Yeah. We had the embedded guys and I was filming him trying to get him to commit to some answers to some questions, but he was very much toe in the party. <laughs> totally I was back in the alligator get up. When you I, guys like, <laughs> I don't know if I was going to be on TV. I might, I might have dressed a bit differently. Though. I thought you might have won like a raffle to hang out with the team or something. <laughs> <laughs> you look like pretty special. Thanks for letting me out of the house looking like that. <laughs> you know how we've been doing our 30 day challenges? We got told to um, fight Della on 30 days notice. So we're wondering, this could be good for YouTube or something. Me and Woodsy tag team. In a fight with yeah, Della. Yeah. When, once your arm's better. Yeah. No, you're probably better off when he's got one arm. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we'll say. Yeah, we'll get that hooked yeah. up. I feel sorry for this boys. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be the first featured death on his YouTube channel. <laughs> We're silly. thinking more like from our angle, a mockumentary style. Like we can film mine and Buddha's training. Oh, yeah, fuck yeah. It. That'd yeah. be sick. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. And then um, I'll, I'll come to the gym, film you's training and all that. And then yeah. on the day, um, maybe like no kicks and no deaths. <laughs> no, um, Jack's quite controlled. <laughs> Jack's nursed me through a few sparring <laughs> sessions over the last few years. Like, oh, but then um, maybe I'll, I was kind of picturing a nice little liver shot on Budzi at some point. Yeah. <laughs> Why on Budzi? Yeah. <laughs> and then he can tag me and then you can do I it. I wouldn't be able to tag him. <laughs> yeah. 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 WWE can... style where I can jump in and like yeah. resuscitate you then drag you out. <laughs> yeah, I reckon I mean, Jack would get the Guinness World Record for the quickest knockout. <laughs> <laughs> Two quickest knockouts. Yeah. In an exhibition fight. So you're down? <laughs> Yeah, that's sick. All right. I'm in. We're going to have to train Buddha. <laughs> yes. Well, how many years we we'll got? We'll get you up the 30 set. days. While um, Charlie's training, I'll Mate. get you. Uh, I we'll can't train you to fight Jack, though. I'm going to train him really badly. <laughs> 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 Who do we get for our corner? Mitchie. Yes. Yeah. Mm, Can cool. we tag Mitch in with his ghetto booty? If you want. <laughs> if you want three of you to get knocked out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's like, it's, a, it's sparring. I'll take Josh. Can we have a brother? Can no, because he's on our team. Yeah, true. True. <laughs> Becomes like an all in, like, yeah. nine on nine. Yeah. We'll take Bradshaw. <laughs> yeah, you could definitely have Bradshaw. You could definitely have Bradshaw. Yeah, man, Charlie on that, like, I'm so, I walked away so pumped for him. I definitely wish I did martial arts as a kid, but Charlie loved his session of Scrappy. Yeah. He saw, Charlie, he just turned five, and I was like, man. Scrappy North Greenwood, ScrappyMMA.com. Yeah. And he, um, Bring your kids. We're training the, the next time. generation. And he, I was like, how much do you love that, Charlie? Did you have fun? And he was like, loved it. He wanted to go again. Like, you can he's tell really he's amazing. done stuff before in other settings like cricket or whatever like he's done classes before have you been teaching wrestling water <laughs> nah he can bash me. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about just the fact Sport, a five-year-old kid that, can yeah. concentrate so well and he's into taking it in yeah. and he wants to learn most of them just like my boy's four and he still like just wants to run around like a headless chicken and mess around but the fact that he's in the room and doing bits and pieces is just enough yeah um, but i can see that charlie like really wants to he enjoyed it, it. He loved yeah. it. I think he loved the two the two coaches. They were really good. Lucas and Cody. But yeah. it's just good seeing them run around and it's primal for kids, right? Rolling around, moving the body, oh, yeah. and they oh, do yeah. they're learning things without knowing they're learning. But it's man, you got a shout out, like it was fucking good. That's I'm bringing sick. him all the time now. First it's class is free. <laughs> I don't know why everyone doesn't come. Yeah. You know, at least try it and do, give your kids a, a chance. But what I've noticed with the kids is it gives them so much discipline. Like the kids that we've had since the start, we've only been open since September, but just the way they are in class, not necessarily their, their ability as martial artists yet, but the way they are more attentive, the way they listen, they're, they're more respectful, they're more disciplined. It's, it's that yeah. is the martial arts values that are most important for kids, not the technique. You know, yeah. that will come. Yeah. But um, just the fact that they're around people and resilience, you know, you're not going to win everything all the time. You know, it's hard. That kind of stuff is what kids need because you know what kids are like. They can't do something. They throw a tantrum. But that's <laughs> not acceptable in the, in the gym. So that's the best part of it for the kids. And that's what the parents like the best is that their kids become that little bit more focused, that little bit more disciplined. Yeah. And even just the dealing with the, no, they do too much of it at that age, but they're dealing with the conflict. Like there was stuff where they like, they, well, they're learning, like they, they were doing like mount and they were doing some tempted wrestling sort of stuff and they're doing like touching each other's knees, but kind of, yeah. it gets a bit like competitive. Yeah. Just seeing them deal with like someone hitting them is good. Like yeah, just dealing with, because like that's the scariest thing, right? For a kid, they get punched in the school. Yeah, that kind of like they freeze yeah. up. Whereas yeah, they like they need to be it's comfortable. Like comfort, comfort, yeah. Comfort, yeah, yeah, comfort in these uncomfortable situations. Yeah, it's good for their confidence. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But it keeps them like humble. Like rather than you just don't want confident kids running around slapping everyone because they think they can do it. So that you know, the humility with the confidence is what you need. 
you don't want too much confidence with this sport otherwise you end up with a, <laughs> with a monster yeah so it's it's tempering that a little bit as well i wonder with the success of all the wa people um if it's going to have a trickle on effect with maybe the sort of teenage group where they can see jack and be like oh i'd love to do that and like Steve, I, I wonder yeah. if you start to notice the next few years if there's more people sort of well even at eternal now when when the lads are walking out from the cage there's young kids taking photos with them and getting their autographs like these are the cream of the crop of the sport which is getting bigger now so they're putting these athletes on a even the eternal athletes you know is on a higher pedestal and and people want to be around them so yeah i definitely think it has a trickle down effect yeah joe it's been so cool all the cricketers that you came and spoke to just every time jack fights you guys fight they're like reposting on their stories like jack like, there'd be like a photo of them with him that they took <laughs> yeah they're all just full fans and even walking to the office like all the scorches and the wa boys are all just like how good was jack the other yeah. day like, i don't know it's just cool seeing interest has continued to grow and grow yeah. and grow like well, perth's good like that right it's not as tall poppy as the rest of australia i feel like perth really lifts because we're like the outsiders we really lift our own teams up whatever the discipline so yeah if, yep and then yeah. people because people are proud right people come out of wa it's like a small yeah, st yeah like, exactly. small population and yeah and, it, and it's always punching you know always, yeah. Um, yeah good talent coming out Perth and the teams do well, you know. Like the congratulations on the other day to you, Budzi, in the Shield. Yeah, last night the boys were well, yesterday. The boys did well. Nothing to do with me. The guys three, <laughs> three in a row. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah, so it was insane. Yeah, it's so good. It's a good time. I feel yeah. at the moment there's a there's a rising tide and it's lifting everyone. Yeah. Is the gym? Are you feeling it in the gym? Are you, like not not like membership, but just like the internal the fighters. Like surely there's this wave of motivation that continues to get stronger when they see you guys return and doing what you're doing and mini t doing what he's doing and yeah it's got to be honestly i'm like i only see like the team really because i'm not in that gym it's south in the big gym um in the evenings so i don't really see like how contagious it, it is but i do notice like in north everyone's pumped yeah um they're all pretty new so like to have someone so high profile like surround in their team i guess if you're you could call it that um is is really motivating for them and, and i see a lot of leads coming through for the new gym and stuff like that um in the wake of the fights you know, yeah it sort of spikes a little bit so it's obviously driving a little bit of traffic towards the gym and, which is great you know all exposure is is good and we don't really advertise um the south gym that just continues to it's do its, got own its base thing. there yeah so it's um, the, getting people in the new one but yeah, it's, it's nice, man. Like we've been working hard at this for probably just us two for 11 years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so. I mean, the South Gym is pumping like every it's night. Pumping, it's yeah. Pumping, eh? Yeah. Full. It's completely full, eh? But it's every, the vibe, from what I understand, is like it's just mm -hmm. the same, you know? Yeah. Like it's just one big team. Like there's, there's hundreds of people in there, but everyone's sort of pushing in the same direction. It's yeah. really cool. There's never drama, there's never conflict. You know, and when you think hundreds of people doing martial arts every day for hours, to the fact there's no conflict is is pretty impressive so, yeah um no, I, I love the place i'm so proud of it like obviously proud of what we've achieved you no know, we're top five we've got a fighter who's the top five in the world but also like just how cool everyone is and how cool our community is and how cool our you know our program is and you know what we've achieved in that you know helping people not necessarily fighters but people from all walks of life of all different you know i pride ourselves we have a lot of um I don't know the right way, word to say, to use it, but like disabled people um, who come to our gym and join in the normal classes, like it's an inclusive place and we want to teach everybody martial arts, no matter what you can do um, or what your physical body is, as long as you're keen and you're, you're in, we're up for teaching you. So, uh, and the coaches like Ryan and Darcy and Josh and Jason, they're, they're second to none at, you know, being looking after people. And, yeah. Um, I think that's how, how we get the techniques across so well is because the people focus is is well, strong and they're all in good hands all the members <laughs> yeah <laughs> the community is what makes us most yeah. proud yeah you know. that uh 17 fight is that your streak at the moment yeah what's the and shavkat's on 17 i think he's 18. 18 yeah right. he's what's all the, he's got all finishes what's the world record streak in the ufc they rick or, that Almeida, Khabib, right? Right? Yeah, um, yeah, right? he, was he undefeated 27 and 0 or something? 29 and 0. 29 and 0 impressive eh? that's pretty, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah that's unbelievable do you believe those comments that they were trying to get him back for 300 or do you reckon um, i reckon they, prob they probably asked i don't know do you reckon they would have asked him? I, I don't know i think so 
Do you ever see a day where he'll come back and fight if the money's nah. big enough? Or he's done I think he's like, he made, I think he's very much a man of his word. And I think he vowed to his mum that he wouldn't fight anymore. And I yeah. think he takes yeah. it pretty seriously. I think he so. takes it pretty seriously. And what does he need to, why does he need to? You know, I think he's proved everything he needs to prove. And yeah, maybe he didn't fight like, have it, at, towards the end of his career, he had a mad resume and maybe towards the start, not so much, but mm. I, I think he's made all the money. Yeah. And I think he's proved all he needs to prove yeah. with the current crop of fighters that are available. And he's got his his mate now just took over from where he left off. So the legacy continues. You know? Yeah. It's pretty ridiculous how that worked out. I eh? <laughs> like yeah. handing over the reins and it worked. <laughs> yeah, as he like as they like sort of envisioned that. That was sort of yeah. how, wasn't it? Well I'll how'd you enjoy the Stylebender Volker? training you did and lead up oh yeah that was, prep. It. that was really cool uh, real beneficial and spent a yeah week at uh freestyle craig jones was there volk was obviously prepping for taporia and then one i think it was two days izzy came in so it was cool to do some sparring with i think on that day i was able to spar with that izzy jimmy crew and volk which is pretty sick like, yeah it's pretty surreal who would be uh if uh shavkat signs and you want to uh, up your wrestling and all that, who would be your guy to kind of bring in? Or know, would probably, you bring in I'd probably, like, probably try and do some more work with Craig. Is he really good to work with? Yeah, he's good to work with. I think he's got a good mind. And obviously you can see him compete his level. Yeah. Like it is, it's ridiculous. And the great thing <laughs> yeah. about Craig is he has no ego and he knows how good he is. So he's happy to change his style completely to the style of the person that you're. Yep. And when he goes with the MMA guys, he doesn't attack the legs as much. And he, he does jiu-jitsu in a completely different way. Yeah. He's actually there to emulate the style that you're going to. Um, and he keeps going to Kazakhstan. So he's getting the yeah. authentic version of them, hey? Yeah, <laughs> in he all did, the rooms. He did tell me he was going to try and hunt down a chef and train with him. <laughs> Bleed that out. Spy, yeah. Yeah. Undercover brother. Yeah, Spy yeah. mission. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking it'd be cool to put together a little reel of like all your highlights in a row. Do you use, obviously, you know, everyone you've knocked out, but can you remember them in order? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can yeah especially if you work backwards. Yeah. No, let's go forwards. So I'll start it off because I remember your last, your eternal champion and you had Adam Bates and you got that crazy. Well, that's going backwards. No, but I mean, yes. Yeah, Where do you want to start from? Adam Bates. And then forward? Yeah. You don't so, want to go all the way back to the start? <laughs> no. I don't think you'd fit that in 90 seconds. You had too many knockouts. I think after Alden had a decision and then I – No, nah, like, you knock, that ironing board knockout, that was your last fight in Eternal and then yeah, you went yeah. to contender. But then I had – That was yeah, a decision. Was a decision, then. eh? Which one? Orange Lusa. Orange Lusa. Oh, yeah, yeah, but I'm not there yet. I was finishing. So, yeah. Old, so, Alden Bates – Knockout ironing yeah. board. Yeah. You could Ridiculous. go one back before that, Glenn Pettigrew, body shot knockout. Yeah. And one back oh, yeah. before that, was that a Brahmo? Dean Abramo? Nah. nah, that would have been. Uh, I thought Kevin Jusset, but oh, it, yeah, it yeah. The, uh, the ref stopped it because of the cut. It wasn't actually a. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Was so that the Italian inch. club? Which what you did? Cap had a song of the Italian club. No, nah, that was Luke Howard. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll and Dean Abramo. Start us from um, contender and list where it was and how it finished. Go forward. Go Dude's on. current day. Yep, all the way from there. You want to take it in turn? Well, yeah, yeah, it was uh, the contender series fight decision. Uh, it it fucking say. wasn't a close fight though, was it? It was just that he is the best chin in, in the world and he took such a pace in that, that guy. Yeah. He was that confused afterwards that he thought he won. He asked, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he yeah. asked Dana if he thought that was a fair decision. I feel like, like I, I threw a knee at one point and... I feel like I was going to finish him. I was really close, and then I need him in the nuts. <laughs> yeah, you know, and then he it. took like full three yeah. minutes. He just took ages. I thought he was going to quit at that point. Yeah. I honestly thought he was going to give up because you landed an eleven punch combination leading up to that. Yeah, and I've uh, yeah, and then he took ages, and then I think I, after that I threw a knee and then slipped, slipped hey. and got the the head and arm. But a dominant performance, and and for contender series, probably a great way to do it, right? Because you get to show show your yeah. full skill set to Dana and like this guy's well-rounded and he's got a good chin, can do jiu-jitsu, et cetera. And then first fight in the UFC was obviously Pete Rodriguez, mm -hmm. supposed to be the Brazilian fella. What's his name? Wally Alves. Wally Alves, but he pulled out the day we left and then we got on the plane and we got Pete and Jack smoked him with a fadeaway yep. straight left hand. And then we went to Singapore and for Ramazan. Oh, the sunburn, sun, sun yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the sunburn guy. For Ramazan and me. Got him with the body shot first round. Fuck yeah. Technique 101. Um, yeah. And then fight three was Danny Roberts. 
that was our yeah. in and out. Um, just go in, get the job done. Get out. <laughs> Jack didn't even take his top off at the weigh-ins. <laughs> yep. When Jack doesn't take his top off in the weigh-in, someone's getting fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> and Danny yeah. just got Good absolutely Danny. obliterated inside a round. Um, yeah. Body work as well towards the end, put him away. Yeah, and then uh, Perth, Randy Brown. Got him. Oh, Gave him the D. Yeah. 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 Got him and then just, um, submitted him. And then Basil. A couple of decisions. <laughs> yeah. Basil and Kev like split decision wins, which I personally think is crazy that they were split. But, you know, this is where Close. we start to familiarize ourselves with the fact that the judges on any given day could vote for anyone, could score it for anyone. So it's good to know that. And it's good to have these close calls and think, well, fuck, yeah. let's like not leave it in there their hands so yeah the two split decisions and then obviously um gilbert yeah back to finishing ways and um how many performance of the nights i had five of the seven five of the seven but i, I feel like the first one was i feel the first one i think he didn't early. get the first one because it was, it was p yeah but, but it was definitely because oh, it was his first fight yeah. and he was a four and oh guy they just uh were good to me and they just got they just got someone in but like, still, oh like, <laughs> you know, five yeah. finishes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that is incredible. In seven yeah. fights. Longest active win streak in the welterweight division. Rookie of the year, you know. Yeah. Just all Let's another see. another day. But onwards the... and upwards. We've got a, obviously a tough fight in front of us, which is what we do it for. Yeah. So I'm pumped. Eh? <laughs> I'm re I really think I can beat Shavkat. And yeah, I reckon I'll shock a lot of people, but... It won't, it won't be shocking to us. No, know. we've been thinking about this for a long time. And I've been saying to anyone that would listen for probably seven years that Jack would be the UFC champion one yeah. day. Is it? So I firmly believe first, yeah. that that's where we're going and, and that's where we will not accept anywhere else yeah. but that. So the the we're firmly focused on the goal. And to this point, we, we haven't had to bring anyone else in. We've done it all ourselves. Yeah. Like we haven't. You know, flown people in for yeah. spar. We've got a pretty good diverse group got a good of people, team. like people that can, like you. We are there are people in our gym. If we have a certain style, there's someone in there that can come in and emulate that style. Ryan and Josh. And then there's a few people behind that can just put the pressure on anyone. Yeah. So I feel like we've got the uh, the team to do it. Yeah. Who's Josh. your big tall Kevin Holland style? Khan. A lot of Josh. Khan. You did a lot of work with Josh and Khan. Yeah. Khan just had a kickboxing fight. Hey, shout out to Jay. Khan? No. Oh, no, not Phil Murray. How do you say his name? Oh, Ma, familiar. Yeah, yeah. The Shark. Oh, no, I didn't Mark know. The Shark, Did he? Yeah. yeah. Does I he didn't... still train with you? Not guys? really. No. I never see him anymore. No. He does stand up. He did stand up random gig with me the other few weeks or other month. No way. Yeah, I was, he's I was, always done a little bit. Of stand I was up, emceeing yeah. this um, comedy club on a Thursday night, and he was he'd be there. good for KO comedy. And he was yeah, such a good fella. Yeah, and like, he was saying he gets like the buzz off at similar fighting. Like, <laughs> yeah, and I can yeah, sympathise with that. Yeah, he was nice. Yeah, yeah exactly. you're a stand up yeah. as well. Yeah. <laughs> Josh, Josh well, should be no. the perfect. I was just thinking, your brother's a perfect spa partner to yeah. run, get that range. Yeah, yeah, he's good sure. at being anyone. Like if he, yeah, if, you know, even good. for Gilbert, he'll fight like Gilbert. Like he'll lower his stance a little bit. Yeah. Josh is is a Swiss Army knife of martial arts. Like he, he can become an MVP as well. And I've literally yep. had Josh. Yeah. <laughs> and, oh, yeah, me and Josh have been trained together for it. And it's Ryan's great yeah. at adapting styles and just being like the other person that you're going to fight. So yeah. Can Josh be as cringy as Ian Gary? <laughs> <laughs> I reckon he could. He could, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, he is good. <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah, any task. No any job task. too big, no job too small. <laughs> <laughs> the king of Perth, and do them all. So good. What was your story you touched on before? Oh, the commission. Yeah. Mm. Fucking hell. So I always wrap Jack's hands. Um, I really enjoy that moment. Like you get 10 minutes when everyone's a bit distracted and in their own little world just to have so i always wrap jack's hands and i've wrapped fucking so all over the world in all different places and never really had any issues um i think in, in the first time in california i had to change something but it was minor um but i started wrapping jack's hands and this commissioner guy made me like unwrap half unwrap one of jack's hands because he didn't like gauze over tape or tape over gauze um which was fine but it was just like one of them things and then as we as jack was walking out normally i just walk behind him but the, they made like a uh flying duck with three commissioners yeah and i couldn't get past so i spent my whole walk out like trying to get past these people 
The flying duck was unbreakable. <laughs> unbreakable. <laughs> Without trying to like, I didn't want to like run past them. So I was just trying to like walk a bit faster and they were very good at like corralling me. <laughs> Done it before. Right? Yeah. So I, so we, anyway, we got there at the end, you can see me, I just sort of where they, where Jack stops at the thing, I sort of run past them a bit ahead where it wides out a little bit. And then anyway, you're coming towards the end of the fight. There's always a commissioner with you. Um, you sit in this little tiny area and then there's a commissioner sitting just behind you. And if you stand up, he sort of tells you to sit down and blah, blah, blah. So the fight's going on. And in the last round, obviously there was that massive reversal in fortunes, like Jack lands the knee and he's on top. And so we're obviously start all three of us are jumping up and down, but the commissioner's right behind me. So he put his hand on my shoulder and he like put me in the chair and I was like, yeah, no dramas. Like, and then something else happened. Then a few more shots went in and I'm jumping up again and he's pushed me down again. It was all pretty mellow and, and kind of normal. It's like what happens in the corner. And then like the finish was just about to happen. I could tell that surely Dan was going to stop it soon. So I'm jumping up and down again. I felt this like actual assault. Like he grabbed <laughs> me and sort of threw me into my chair and then kept his hands on me. And I was like, fuck it. Oh, this is a bit off. I don't even really know who it is. So I'm, I've got a pretty good idea, but like it's behind me. So I just sort of spun around and sort of smacked his arm off of me and just gave myself a little bit of space from him. And I just told him to leave me alone. Distance management. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, just leave me alone. And like I turned back around and the Jack's walking around now. So I missed like the very finishing sequence. And then I walk up to the cage door because we're locked out because Gilbert's getting seen to. And the, another commissioner comes up to me and goes, you can't assault commissioners. And I was like, <laughs> what are you talking about, mate? And then another lady commissioner came over and went, oh, it's not acceptable what you did to that commissioner and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, whatever. Like, he's fucking got his hands all over me. I'm just trying to do my job. I'm not even looking. Like, I I'm focused on what I'm doing. Like, just leave me alone. And then Jack comes walking around. So I've ran away from them and jumped on the cage. And then they've grabbing me and like, pulling me <laughs> you're not allowed to climb in. I said, I'm not going to climb in. I just want to <laughs> shake his hands. Like, so, um, Anyway, we get let in and actually like when Jack is with Dan, that's the first time I've seen Jack since the fight because I'm dealing with all this, this commission stuff. So that's why in that picture, I go over and say like, well done to Jack. And, uh, and then Rogan goes in and another commissioner comes over. Like he must've been like the lead commissioner for that side or whatever. And you can see when Jack's getting interviewed by Rogan, there's someone like grilling me in the background and he's like, you... You just assaulted a police officer. And I was like, what are you talking about, mate? Who's a police officer now? Oh, that commission is an off duty police officer. Um, and you hit him. So that's assault. And he might press charges against you. I was like, fuck off. Like he he's assaulting me. You really like, are in America, right? Yeah, it's crazy. Like, I've never in all my years of doing the I've never like had a run in with the commission yeah. like that. Before. And are they local Miami people? Yeah. He was just a bit of a job. I found them all weird, like obviously working in, in the industry and having an event. Their commission were all in our room. Like when we got there, there was like five of them and that you get assigned one, but I found like they'd all keep coming in and out and they're all having banter with one another across the changing room. And I found them very unprofessional. If yeah. I'm honest. Did and you put anything in writing nah, or anything? Or? No, I, don't go. I just, as long as they don't put, <laughs> as long as nothing goes the other way, I'm happy. You know? <laughs> just leave me alone. But that was, it was just a bit of a shame because I, in that moment, then I'm just pissed off. Yeah, yeah. Because I was just... it the same guy that was trying to pull you down, the same one that made you rewrap? Yeah, oh, it was personal. How to get him, man? Eh? <laughs> but you can see it. There's a short of Jack of the finish from like the side angle, not one of the official cameras. And you can see he's flapping because he runs in and he's got the blue stool, and he like walks past Jack and throws the stool off to the side, <laughs> but nearly hits Jack with the stool. And he's just running around. Then he spins around and points at the corner. He's just he's lost the plot. Completely. Yeah. <laughs> Did he, they do anything to Costa or Ryan? No. Nah. It's because I, I, I was the immediately accessible one. Yeah. So I think like probably, and they're probably a bit calmer than I am. So maybe next time I'll hide myself in a bit further. Yeah. Just, they'll probably deal with that better than I will. Yeah. I, 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 I'm notoriously bad at pressure. <laughs> Especially when there's emotions are high. Well, yeah. And if you and... do something to me that I feel is not warranted, I'm going to say something about it. Yeah. I'm not just going to let you do it because yeah. you think you're in a position of power against me. I'm just there working, you know, that is my job. I was so, wondering, did Costa ever, because he speaks Portuguese, hey? Yeah. Oh, was Burns' yeah, yeah. corner ever just saying stuff in Portuguese and Costa would translate for you? Anything, no, or? we weren't that advanced. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't think that was that much. To, I think it was pretty obvious what was happening. It was like, yeah, he's trying to hold you on the ground. Like, Yeah, it was pretty sick. It was, yeah, I mean, the advice Rod was giving was pretty simple. It was just more like break the groups. and 
It was great yeah, having him there because yeah. the minute the grappling things happened, he just clicks in and he's like, he knows. Whereas for me, there's probably a little bit more thought in the grappling exchange. It's not my strongest suit. Yeah. Whereas for Rod, it's that that is his strongest suit. And it's really great. To, just the comfort yeah. of having him there to know that sometimes things happen. And, and honestly, I've never seen him before, especially when he's involved. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I've been teaching him that cartwheel escape for years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And it's good as well because you've obviously wrestled with Costa so much. He knows yeah. your game as well. So Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it was awesome. Obviously, Costa's got such a high level of jiu-jitsu, you know. Yeah. And, yeah. So, and he obviously, he has applied it in MMA, so he's the perfect man. Yeah. Yeah. To have in your team. What was Rogan saying to you when you were cage side after the, because he was ch chatting you, wasn't he? We just had, me and Ryan just had a, a very minor sort of superficial chat with him, like, oh, what did you think of that? And he was like, yeah, it was fucking impressive, man. Uh, and then, yeah. yeah, and then just before he went to interview Jack, we were sort of having a bit of a laugh. You know when you did the knee, sorry to go back, Yeah. did you feel, what, like, did it suck the life out of the arena in a way? No, I think people got up because fight fans like finishes, right? Yeah. So then they're yeah. like, but you could see some people were pretty devo. Because yeah. <laughs> the reactions of like Logan Paul, Mr. Beast, and everyone, like all the celebrities they panned on were like, everyone was obviously amazed by Well, it. there was definitely a point at some, where he was holding me down and the crowd started to like do a little bit of like, boo. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> they did. Really? Yeah. Because yeah. you yeah. said you're going to take their fan, his fans. <laughs> <laughs> there was a few of them there. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. Crazy, man. Awesome. Yeah. So good, guys. And it's onwards and upwards, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Thanks so much for um, coming in, especially no, post-surgery. It's, it's, it's always a pleasure to catch up with you. It's like a tradition now, isn't it? Like, yeah. yeah. Have a fight. Yeah. Come yeah. and talk yeah. about it. Yeah. <laughs> kind of feels like it's in the books now. Yeah. And I'm um, looking forward to our fight. Yes. Oh, yeah. I'm not. I'm looking forward to your guys' fight. Can we break, can we break the other arm? <laughs> you're welcome to try. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's awesome. Boys. Yeah, and it's, yeah. Everyone's so proud of what you're doing and it's just keep doing what yeah. you're doing. Keep paving the way and enjoying what you're doing. It's fucking great to see. Yeah. Um, yeah, thanks so much. And you've got your kids to pick up. Yeah, kids' school run. Dad just quickly, year, how's your fam going? Yeah, they're good. Just about to go. We're going to go to the zoo. Ooh. Yeah. Nice. Franco loves the zoo. Right? Yeah, good. <laughs> Sweet. Well, I'm going to go to the zoo, which is Padbury Catholic <laughs> parking <laughs> situation and yeah. see how we deal with that now. Yeah. Before we go to the doghouse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, big thanks to all the patrons, subscribers, the people watching on YouTube. Yep. Rocky Ridge, Rusty, Manscaped, and yeah, everyone who's supporting the podcast. And Yeah. Look forward to your YouTube, Jack. Yeah, Can't wait. Yeah, That's um, good. a good move. Cheers, yeah, boys. Till next time, boys. Yep. Cheers. See you Cheers. next time. Boys. Yeah, she's like a tennis, the old crossover. Were many. <laughs>